Besides girdling, another approach to reducing the number of tan oak trees on the Usal property is by harvesting them to produce a new product, Ruffy's Biochar. Biochar is a soil amendment that helps the ground retain water and hold on to nutrients while preventing them from becoming pollutants in streams, rivers, and eventually the nearby ocean. Biochar also sequesters carbon by keeping it in the soil in solid form, contributing to air quality improvement. What you're seeing here is the decks for the biochar production that was a, essentially an understory thinning of tan oaks in a group area on the WRPTHB. And this is the, the landing where we, we're now moving them to, to Branscombe, but they're decked here. These are about 16 foot logs is what we're hoping, although they're not perfect, and uh, we've already moved half of them to Branscombe. I mean, we can go up here and look at what we did, and this was a, you know, we did a very light harvest, even in this, it was a heavy oak stance, not a big area, but, and we generate a lot. I mean, we have this material. We have lots of it. Yeah. Don't worry. We got. We can keep this going forever. But we also thin from below with these tanox because what we don't want to do is create tanox sprouts everywhere. Yeah, so we're right, trying right. to get this. And Richard and I came and underplanted it with redwood. So it's. You know, we're hoping still to convert it to obviously conifer. Okay. It's not our long-term goal. We didn't just come in and clear cut a bunch of tanox, which would definitely reduce our production costs. Sure. So. We're doing it, but, you know, we want to see if this is viable. Can we thin, you know, in conjunction even with thinning conifers, can we thin the hardwoods with it at least to keep the A to B group species sure. in balance? Right. So how big an area did you take the wood out of here? Well, it's the, two and a half acres, but our, our allotted area is something like 16 acres that we have money to do. So we're not necessarily done on the harvesting portion Depending on what Judy asked for, on you know how the biomature, what our production is, when you want more, there's already approved harvest plan. We're going to be here next winter. We could get it. We could get some this winter and sit it over the winter like we did last winter. It's pretty much up to us. Part of that log deck has been moved to Branscombe in Mendocino County near the Usall Forest. In fall 2014, Ruffy acquired a portable biochar conversion unit and brought it here for the initial testing phase. Judy Harwood, the project leader, explains how it works to two members of the local Kato tribe. Just to kind of explain the overall process, the logs that you see that are standing right over there, those are tan oak logs that came out of the Utah Redwood Forest from our a demonstration plot where we went in and harvested the tan oak in a real specific way to increase biodiversity. So then what we did is we had those hauled here and we had a chipping company come and chip these chips, all these piles that you see sitting here. So yeah, we'll just come out here, stab a bunch of chips, see what the moisture is, and then we're, it's a demonstration project, so we're trying to answer that question, what is the moisture? For this machine, it looks like 20 and below is really where you need to be. To be running like that, like, you know, beautiful, no smoke, the operator not having huge issues trying to keep the reaction going, so. So I'll show you guys how this machine works then. The chips are loaded with a small little tractor there into this first bin. Watch what happens. The way this works is the chips are dropped into here. You have two uh, barrels, one inside of each other, and the reaction is occurring down here. The chips are turning into char down here, and as soon as they get charred and get to a light enough weight, they get sucked through the machine. That looks good right now. So we have the reaction that's like occurring here. And the biochar gets picked up by, there's an auger right there. And that auger is slowly pushing out the char into our output bins that are over here. So here's where the sin gas is lit, and that is how we're getting that. Basically, when that fire goes out, your, your reaction is lost and you're producing smoke. 
if that fire is stable and you can see it's really stable right now, then you're in good shape and you're actually flaring off all your sin gas. So in the end, um, you want to see that fire just blazing just like that. That's like perfect. So then the biochar ends up getting brought up through those loggers, with those augers. carbon. You can see it's just the gases have been separated from this and it carbonizes and creates this charcoal. And what it is, is a, its best value right now is a, a soil amendment. And so you mix this with soil and other nutrients like you would put in soil like nitrogen and potassium and all that. And those nutrients actually cling to the biochar. Um, and they allow the plant roots to easily exchange those nutrients with the soil much more efficiently than if you don't have something like biochar in there. And it's called a cation exchange capacity. But the other thing is that this is just pure carbon. So instead of like when, if you're just burning wood to produce electricity, for example, all the carbon dioxide is going into the atmosphere. It's still carbon neutral because that tree had taken up that carbon to begin with. But this, in this case, the carbon is in a solid form that you bury, you end up sequestering carbon. So you guys did a market feasibility study then? Yeah. So what market area did you guys look at? We looked at um, Mendocino, Humboldt, and Sonoma counties. And that information is going to be made publicly available on the Repi website. As soon as we nail down where all of our biochar is going to go, then we'll allow anybody else to be able to use the information that we've developed for if they want to do a biochar. And one of the big things that we're trying to do here is help landowners or government entities or the tribes replicate this type of project. We are trying to work out the kinks. We're trying to figure out the marketing. We're trying to do all that because ultimately for us, it's a forest health issue. That's the bottom line. We want as many people to be able to use this week's woody biomass as possible. So the, when we got into this, when Judy wrote the grant, it was about how can we put economics into into rehabilitating the forest and then pay for the cost of removing excess pan oaks mainly. And what we've learned as we've got through it is that the, the actual benefits of this, that's still a benefit, but what we're learning is that the real benefit is a water quality issue, or, it, or it's at least as big a benefit. Because, you know, people are concerned about, you know, is there enough water for the fish? And, you know, if we're, uh, you know, the, everybody thinks the pot growers are using all the water, or the grape growers are using all the water. Well, if you can actually reduce water usage by a third with the right mix, that is a lot. I mean, what you? This was a two hundred thousand dollar machine, yeah, and probably really a two hundred fifty thousand by the time you get it right. By the time we've made the alterations, we're probably going to end up spending two twenty five or something. We obviously still need to put a spark arrestor cap on it. Yeah, it's one of the big problems. But this could be a game changer for fish on the north coast. With some adaptions, the heat from biochar production can also be used to produce electricity if the units are located on a permanent site. For now, Ruffy intends to operate this unit as a semi-mobile plant in order to minimize transportation expenses by taking it to where the logs are. As with many pilot projects, we are facing a few technical issues. The drier your chip, the better the quality also. If we have two or three days of good dry weather and the chips are dry, it runs like a charm. I absolutely think it does have a future. Uh, everybody I've talked to in this community is interested in it. 
and wants it. He wants to know where they can get it. One of the big question marks around this entire project was, will there be enough demand to get the price that we need in order to support this high cost of doing forest restoration? And what we found is that there's actually way more demand than we have the supply for. Uh, we have orders at this point for uh, much, much more uh, biochar than we can actually make at this time. Um, although as the weather gets better and we can produce more, we're hoping that we can uh, catch up and fill those orders. The Refi Biochar Demonstration Project is actually sponsored by several different organizations that have come together to make this project possible. Um, we got the equipment grant, a large grant from the Department of Water Resources, DWR, State of California, through Proposition 84 funds. Um, we also got a grant to do some of the in-forest work from uh, USDA Natural Resource Conservation Service. We received um, some project management funds from the Joseph and Vera Long Foundation. And we've received some small grants in the very beginning stages of, of our project development from the Forest Service and the Community Foundation of Mendocino County to do the initial community scoping and development of the project. And finally, um, the North Coast Resource Partnership actually um, brought this project along with 18 other projects um, to the attention of the Department of Water Resources um, to get that, um, that large Prop 84 grant to purchase this piece of equipment.